Hey guys, Red Eye Gaijin here. Um, today I wanted to talk a little bit about driving in Japan. So, um, a lot of you uh, might have come from cities or parts of, of the country where you just can't, um, you can't get around effectively without ha owning a car to drive around with. And um, I, I think that is true um, in some parts of Japan. So uh, in my experience, um, when I when I the first city I lived in in Japan was Mayabashi uh, in Gunma, Gunma Ken, um, and Gunma is is sort of a, a fairly um, rural prefecture um, even though it's it's not too far from um, from Tokyo so you, you could get a, uh, a Shinkansen from a, a bullet train from Tokyo to to Maebashi via Takasaki uh, and it, it's really just the other side of Saitama so it's you know it's about an hour um, it was probably an hour and a half from me uh, door to door uh, to get off at somewhere like Shibuya and, um, and off at, uh, coming from my, my train station in, in, within my Bashi city. So anyway, um, other than the times you go to Tokyo, um, getting around in Gunma you can do with bicycle and um, and train, but um, but it's just a lot easier to get around by car, and I think um, that is why I got to a point where I realised um, I'm going to buy a car, and um, and something that influenced me there was the fact that a lot of the other um, foreigners who I had come into contact with in the first few months had cars. So I did some inquiries and um, there were quite a few uh, second-hand car dealers. Now something that blew me away about um, about cars, second-hand cars in Japan is that they're just so cheap. And I think it's something to do with um, actually the um, the idea that secondhand goods are pretty much worth worthless <laughs> I'm exaggerating a little bit but um, it's in line with um, the idea that Japan uh, is what has been called a throwaway society uh, I don't know if this is still relevant now uh, that the economy has sort of gone downhill in the last few years but um, originally or when I was there uh, well let's say at least at least uh, eight years ago um, there was this idea that you know if you if you don't buy something that's brand new it's it's quite unusual so you know second hand cars um, Second-hand clothes, second-hand anything—it's kind of um, not not something that you would talk about openly to everyone. Anyway, uh, that's probably a whole nother a whole nother video. But um, getting to cars—they're so cheap. Anyway, compared to Australia, the the car I bought, which was a Toyota Corolla uh, automatic, uh, it was I think four or five years old in perfect condition and it was literally less than half the price of, of what I would have paid in Australia for that same, same car um, you know and given that the um, the price for a brand new version of the same car is quite similar or was quite similar at the time in Australia um, 
it was just a phenomenal opportunity to uh, to be a car owner at a, at a very low cost, you know, a, sort of one month salary. Um, so anyway, uh, I, I went and I bought a car and um, filled out all the uh, relevant paperwork, which um, which might be another video too. But um, that's uh, that's something that was really a great thing to have in Gunma. Now, um, I actually ended up moving from um, from Gunma to Osaka and I drove. So I, I drove, uh, I think it was 11 or 12 hours through the snow. In some cases, I had to pass through Niigata. Um, but it was a great little car and it got me there no problem. Um, so, I, I, I guess uh, the takeaway point there is, if you're living in a, um, you know, if, if you're living anywhere outside of, uh, I would say, Tokyo, probably Yokohama, anywhere sort of within an hour commute of Tokyo, uh, and likewise Osaka, uh, probably Kyoto, you don't need it. Um, Kobe is pretty good. Um, anyway, basically somewhere where the, the train, the trans, public transport is good but not amazing as it is in, in the bigger cities. Um, yeah, think about buying a second-hand car because um, they're really cheap and um, it, it can actually um, change the scope of your experience while, while you're living there. So, um, you know, not, not only um, can you get out to places, you know, where, you know, the, the last train uh, to come home is uh, just, just too early to, to bother going, um, unless it's a long weekend or something, but um, you also... Um, you can offer people lifts. Um, I mean, <laughs> I don't mean random people, but um, you know, amongst the people you're getting to know, um, you know, you you, you can um, you can help people out, and and I think that goes a long way to making friends and um, and, and just helping your your whole experience there. Um, so yeah. Um, I would definitely recommend buying a cheap second-hand car um, if you're living in a rural area. Uh, the other thing I, I uh, wouldn't mind mentioning there is filling up at the petrol station or the gas station, um, depending on, on where you are. That was... Uh, that's something I, I, I really like about Japan, um, which, which I haven't really thought about until now, uh, or I haven't thought about for a long time until now. And it's when you, um, let, let's just compare um, my experience in Australia with petrol stations and my experience in Japan. So in Australia, about probably 90% of petrol stations or gas stations, um, they're self-service and it's, they're basically, um, a, a very much get in, do it yourself, um, and then when you're paying, um, it's all mostly a, a, a male dominated uh, service industry so people working there you know they might have a, a mechanical garage um, big guys fixing cars so it's very much a, a man's domain in general but um, something that took me back uh, when I went to the uh, to, to fill up uh, my, my car with gas or, or petrol uh, in Japan was there are actually a lot of girls working in, in these places, a lot of females, sorry, um, and they're um, they're all wearing these uh, 
what looked like uh, car racing um, uniforms. And, um, and not only that, um, there are actually prob... I, I guess it depends on the city, but there are probably um, more more gas stations that serve you rather than being self-service. So they will um, usher your car in, um, they will come to your window, you don't need to get out of the car, ask you how much petrol you want. So, you, you know, you would say um, how many litres or you would say how much money you want to spend this time. Um, and then they would clean your car what, um, while it's filling up. Like, well, to the degree that they'll, they'll ask for your ashtray, empty it out, give it back to you. And then they'll, um, they'll also wipe down your windows. A and this is without asking. This is, and, and there's no sort of cost. Um, it's just the service, the level of service is different. And, um, yeah, so, so it's, it's quite, actually quite a nice experience uh, filling up with gas in Japan. Um, and, and I think for those of you who have had a haircut in Japan um, you know, and comparing that to your home country, it's probably along those lines. So, and, and I might um, make another video about that. So anyway, uh, having a car in Japan is pretty cool. Um, everyone, I, I, I think the, the key message about owning cars in Japan that, that, that's sort of well, well known now is you don't need a car. I think in most cases, uh, because peop most people live in or around big cities, um, that's true. But if you are in a uh, situation where, you know, you're not in a major city, um, then I would definitely look into the second-hand car market and enjoy filling up with gas. All right, that's it. Red Eye Gaijin. See ya.